In this tutorial, we're going to be exploring the view window on the Casio FX CG50 graphic calculator. For more tutorials on this calculator, visit parkermaths.com forward slash CG50. Before you start this tutorial, make sure you know how to plot a simple graph on your calculator. You might want to do the drawing a graph tutorial before getting started. From the main menu, we're going to enter graph mode, number five. We're going to enter our function, which is 0.1x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 10. Then we'll press EXE to go into the graph view. And at the moment, we have a graph which looks like it goes off the screen. So what we're going to do is adjust the scale and the axes so that we can fit more of the graph on the screen. To do that, we press F3, which takes us to the view window. In this menu, we're able to adjust the minimum and maximum X and Y values and also the scale on the axes. So I'm going to set the X minimum to negative five and the X maximum to 20. I'm going to leave the scale as one that just means the X axis is marked every unit. And the dot value will automatically adjust itself based on what we put in for these values. So we never really need to touch the dot value. Let's also change the Y values by scrolling down. I'm going to set the Y minimum to negative 70 and the maximum to 30. Because negative 70 and 30 are a bit further apart, I'm going to change the scale to 10. That means the Y axis will be marked every 10 units. There are some more values underneath, but for the purposes of the graphs we're drawing, you don't need to change any of these values. To return to the graph, press EXE. And now we can see the graph nicely fits on the screen. Now, if you don't know in advance what the graph is going to look like, you might not be able to choose the minimum and maximum axis values right first time. Sometimes it's just a case of trial and error. You try something, if it doesn't work, you try something else. Now that we've got a graph nicely fitting on our screen, I'd like to take a look at some of the other helpful functions in the view window. But first of all, I'd just like to show you another way of accessing the view window. If you're in function mode, which I can get to by pressing exit, you can still access the view window without going through the graph window. To do that, we have to press shift before we press F3. That can be very useful to fix an error that sometimes occurs. Sometimes people accidentally set the X or Y minimum and maximum values to the same value. So for example, if I set the X min and X max to 20, clearly my calculator is gonna have difficulty drawing that. And if I try, I get an error which says invalid setting. If you get this error, you won't be able to view the graph. And so the only way to get to view window is by pressing shift F3. And while we're in this menu, I'd just like to show you the three presets that you might sometimes use when plotting one of these graphs. If I press initial, then it sets my X min to minus 6.3 and the max to 6.3 and the Y min to minus 3.1 and the Y max to 3.1. That's often a good starting point for many typical graphs. If I press standard, then it sets them to minus 10 and 10. And then there's a third one for trigonometry, which we're going to have a look at for the next function. So let's exit the view window and I'm going to delete this function and replace it with the graph of y equals sine x. Before I plot this graph though, I'm going to change my angle units from radians into degrees, which you might be more familiar with. To do that, I need to access the setup menu by pressing shift and then setup. And then I scroll down until I get to angle and I change it to degrees by pressing F1. My calculator will now stay in degrees until I reset it or change it to a different angle unit. If I plot this graph of Y equals sine X now, we don't get a very good scale for it. It almost looks like it's a horizontal line. That's because if we want to plot trigonometric graphs in degrees, we need a much larger range of values on the X axis. And it would also be sensible to have a much smaller range of values on the Y axis. 
So we'll go into view window. And a quick way of doing that is to go to the trig preset. That sets it to minus 540 to 540. And the Y axis is minus 1.6 to 1.6. If we press EXE, we can now see the graph. And we can see it looks much more like a typical sine curve. If I didn't want to see this much of the curve, I could of course go into the view window and change these values to something more suitable. I might decide the graph is going to start at zero, in which case I'd get a little bit less of it. If you're a little bit further along the course and you already know what radians are, you might find it worth knowing that when you press trig in radians mode, the X values go from minus six pi to six pi. But if you haven't met radians yet, don't worry too much about that.